So it's a critical relationship, vital to the stability of South Asia. And if politicians of both nations are stuck in a rut, is there nothing that can be done? Well, not quite. Some Pakistanis living in the United States have made it their life's mission to dispel misconceptions and build bridges between the people of the two countries. Nina Donahue explains. In a quiet Baltimore suburb, two very different worlds coexist, but they don't collide. Thanks largely to the efforts of Mohammed Jamil, a Pakistani former Air Force officer turned Maryland businessman, who helped establish the Baltimore Islamic Center. He's acutely aware of the need to build understanding between Americans, Pakistanis, and other local Muslims who've chosen to make the U.S. their home. We have a regular uh, uh, invitation from schools, colleges, universities. A group of students come in from churches, from synagogues, uh, from uh, private schools, and as well as public schools on a regular basis. The center maintains an open-door policy. During Ramadan, anyone is welcome to attend the nightly iftar dinner and the center provides a free medical clinic for local residents of any faith. Efforts Jamil considers vital, even more so following the mass shooting at a Sikh temple this week. It's in the back of the mind of the community. Uh, it is a uh, caution. The non-Muslim community at large also becomes very uh, anxious and, becomes, and develops anxiety, wondering whether these people coming into this center, are they all terrorists? Uh, this is a sad, uh, very tragic event. Uh, we sympathize with the families who have suffered, and uh, this only makes our task of outreach even more uh, urgent. I think the major onus is upon the Muslim community than on the American community. On the other hand, I feel that there is enough expertise available within America and the powers that be that it is their responsibility to go to facts as opposed to appeasing the general ignorance of people. Ignorance that Jamil and his colleagues counter by working directly with local law enforcement. We become the liaisons between the community and FBI. We also become the general ears and eyes of the FBI. Non-badge, non-related like that. You know, we are not uh, ordained as officers of the FBI. So anytime when something happens in the local area where a Muslim may be involved, they contact us. So they contact and then we become the intermediary into either getting them together or clarification of any problems. Teaching both cultures to avoid simple misunderstandings that can easily escalate. Let's say a Muslim wife, for example, she's driving, maybe she's over speeding and a police officer pulls her off the road. Immediately her head would be down and in her mind she's thinking, oh my God, what am I going to tell my husband what I did? Whereas the police officer is looking at it, oh, she must be hiding something, I must search the car. Maybe she's transporting drugs or something. So I tell them they must smile. Don't be a stiff. Smile and say, Madam, you just broke the speed limit. Bridges still need to be built between both civil societies. But most important of all seems to be a mutual appreciation, not just of culture, but of history. Nina Donaghy, CCTV. Windsor Mill, Maryland.